If you clicked on this video, you might be researching and looking at building your first sim racing setup and still figuring out what wheel, pedals or cockpit you want to buy and whether to use a console or a gaming PC. You may already have a sim racing setup and play on PlayStation or Xbox, but you are considering switching to a PC and may have no experience buying a gaming computer or building one. Wherever you fall, I will try to help you out with some fundamentals and things to consider. The process is straightforward if you plan on using a gaming console. However, if you wish to have access to other sim racing titles, like iRacing for example, or build out a triple screen setup, then a PC is going to be required. Before I start, I want to be clear that I'm not a computer expert, but I have had some experience building a few different variations for sim racing. When I switched from an Xbox for racing, I started with a pre-built PC to get up and going as quickly as possible. I quickly started upgrading components as I got more comfortable and figured out what was more crucial for racing titles. I've tried several different parts and built a fully custom water-cooled PC and an air-cooled machine, which I'm currently using to run my setup. Let's first go over some fundamentals for anyone who has not had any experience specking or building a computer that is important to consider for gaming and running sim racing hardware. This video will not be a buyer guide telling you exactly what parts to buy or specific configurations, as there are just too many variations and not having tested all scenarios, I don't think it would be wise to offer my advice. Instead, I will talk about things you should consider when researching and shopping for the key components that make up a solid sim racing PC, and what I've found has had the most impact for me. Considering everyone will have different budgets, I will talk about areas you should try to maximize or treat as a priority. I also believe in future proofing to avoid frequently upgrading to keep up with the latest and future simulations and racing titles. An underpowered PC can hurt your sim racing experience. You may have to run graphics at lower settings, compromising the overall look and immersion. Or you may struggle to achieve a higher FPS, frames per second, resulting in a poor experience as racing games are fast paced and are just better and more realistic at higher frame rates. Depending on your experience or comfort level, your first decision is whether to purchase a pre-built gaming PC or build your own. In the long run, you will likely save a bit of money building your own which can be a lot of fun and a rewarding experience. You will also have more control of the components in your build, allowing you more customization. Building a PC has become increasingly more accessible over the last several years. Still, the number of options can become overwhelming, so I'll try to break down some of the key things to consider. Two of the most critical parts of any PC related to gaming or sim racing are the processor, CPU, and your graphics card, the GPU. It's no surprise that these will also likely be the most expensive parts of your build. Ensuring you purchase the right CPU and GPU is essential. Giving yourself some headroom for future proofing is wise, as upgrading will take another big chunk of your wallet later. Both of these components contribute heavily to your overall gaming experience. However, the GPU is vital to achieving high FPS and a great looking experience, especially for sim racing. The CPU is responsible for the computational tasks of a sim racing title, such as physics calculations. A CPU with at least six cores will be more than capable of running most of the current sim racing titles. Conversely, the GPU ensures the game looks great and runs at a high FPS. The more powerful the graphics card, the higher resolutions you'll be able to run, like 1440p and above. As I mentioned, the GPU is essential to any sim racing PC build, and it will often be the most expensive part of the whole build. If you're looking at running a triple screen setup or even VR, your graphics card will be put under load more. A triple screen means triple the visual output at the desired resolution. Investing more of your budget into the GPU is the best way to future-proof your build, but your CPU choice is still equally important. The decision between Intel and AMD has become less important in recent years. Both manufacturers have been pumping out powerful chips and the comparisons are closer than ever. However, I only have experience with Intel personally, but I know that both will offer similar options at each level and budget. So do your homework here on comparisons and benchmarks, which you'll find plenty of here on YouTube. It would be best if you considered a few key things to look at. The overall number of cores is one of the important specs to look for. Generally, I would start at a minimum of six for most sim racing games. Eight or above is going to be better. So if you're looking to multitask, stream or video edit, you should maximize the number of cores in the CPU. Also consider the clock speed of the CPU, as this will significantly impact overall performance. 
For example, a clock speed of around 3.5 and beyond is ideal. I would recommend that once you've determined your CPU and GPU, it's time to select a motherboard that can both support and maximize those components. The first factor will be what CPU manufacturer you use, Intel or AMD, as motherboards are not compatible with both. So this will be the obvious first thing to filter your search. Then I would look at the following things. What generation CPU can the motherboard support? It would be wise to purchase the last gen or current gen CPU for the latest enhancements. Thus picking a motherboard that can handle that is key. It's also wise to consider a board with multiple PCIe slots. One will be reserved for your GPU, but it is potentially a good idea to have a second or even third one available for adding things like a capture card if you plan to stream your racing, or maybe a dedicated sound card which can be helpful when using haptics. Or what I've done is install an internal USB card to give me an additional four ports without having to add another extender. And trust me, if you're getting into sim racing and plan to build out a rig with multiple accessories, you're going to need a lot of USB ports. I'm probably occupying eight to 10 right now. Also pay close attention to the amount of IO ports on the motherboard. Built-in Wi-Fi is also handy to have, especially if you can't plug in an ethernet cord. Ultimately look for something that can support the CPU and GPU of your choice, in addition to RAM frequency, which we'll discuss next. Your RAM or memory is essential for multitasking and ensuring your PC runs fast and efficiently when doing multiple things. The RAM caches certain aspects of the game, enabling them to be used again quickly. It would be best if you always aimed for a minimum of 16 gigabytes for a gaming PC build. This should give you comfortable headroom for the majority of games. However, if you're looking at streaming or video editing on the same PC, you should increase it to 32 gigabytes or higher. With any PC, build storage is essential, but even more important for a gaming or sim racing PC. This is where you are both going to be installing and running games. You want enough storage to store all your games and manage other PC tasks with some free space to spare. For example, a PC often caches files on your hard drive or SSD, taking up additional storage space. So keeping some free space is a good plan for a stable and fast PC. You should look for a fast SSD as your primary storage to install games faster and have quick transitions through loading screens. I also recommend having a larger backup hard drive for storing or backing up files you don't regularly run or offloading games you don't often play if you need to free up space on your main drive. Proper cooling will ensure all your components can run at their best and not too hot which can throttle the performance. You wouldn't want to spend all your hard earned money on a powerful CPU and GPU only to have it hindered because things are getting too hot. A good cooling system such as a liquid cooler for your CPU can maintain lower temps and as a bonus, some of them look pretty cool with display screens to get a visual on your temps. Often overlooked are the type of case fans you install to keep cool air moving in and hot air moving out. Not all fans are created equally and you want to ensure the fans you install can handle the generated heat. I would look for a PWM fan this way your motherboard can control the fan speeds and adjust accordingly depending on your CPU or GPU temps. This will help ensure you're always getting enough air movement at the correct times while minimizing extra noise when not gaming or doing other tasks. When talking about cooling, equally important to fans is the PC case itself. Now there are endless options at all different price points when it comes to encasing your computer, but for me I would look at the airflow of the case first and aesthetics last as many these days do a great job of looking good while promoting efficient airflow. So what do I mean by airflow? You want to ensure that your PC can bring in adequate cool air from your room, meaning the more open or ventilated areas there are on the case, the better. So let me give you a visual example of what I mean in a few scenarios. Let's use my current H7 Flow case for this example. I chose this case not only because it looks sleek and minimal, which is my taste, but it has excellent airflow. I run the three fans at the front in an intake configuration. The front panel is perforated with a mesh filter to prevent a lot of dust from coming in. Because this is all open, it helps with how much air it can bring in without running the fans at ridiculously high speeds. At the top of my case is where I've installed the radiator and the fans for the liquid CPU cooler. These fans are responsible for exhausting the hot air generated from the CPU, but also aid in exhausting hot air from the case and what is generated by the GPU. All GPUs should also have fans installed unless it's a liquid cooled model. 
These fans are configured to cool the GPU and pull in cold air, but then hot air rises from above the backplate of the GPU, or in this configuration is technically at the top. So you want the cool air moving in and the hot air moving up as hot air by nature rises. I also have one fan at the rear of my case for aiding in the exhaust, but it's only sometimes necessary if you find you're getting enough cooling from the other fans. There are other types of configurations to achieve the same results. Still, in principle, you want to have good airflow design through your case to maximize those expensive components to the best of their abilities. Last but equally as important as everything I mentioned is the power supply unit, more commonly known as the PSU. As the name suggests, this powers your entire PC. So I recommend you choose wisely and invest in something that will give you a good amount of headroom to handle the power demanded by your components, while future-proofing yourself for upgrades down the road. The easiest way I've found to decide on a power supply is to use one of the many calculators online that allow you to input the components of your planned build, and it will tell you how much power would be required. Then I would give yourself some extra room from there. One helpful tool that is widely used is PCPartPicker.com. It is a free service that helps you design your build and ensure everything is compatible. It also allows you to budget by giving you the final price of the configured build, as well as calculating the power required for all the components. I've used this tool many times before planning a new computer build. That brings us to budget, which I realize will be different for everyone. However, you can still maximize that budget regardless of how much you're willing to shell out. The last thing you want to do is blow all your budget on one component and be left short on the others. It's all about building a balanced computer for what you need. PCPartPicker.com can help you here. I won't give you specific builds at different price points as I'm not experienced enough, but a few notes of just personal advice if I may. There are some places you can save money that doesn't offer much back in terms of performance. First is the case. As I mentioned, if you care about performance, look at airflow first. Yes, many of those fancy glass box cases look good and show off your build, but air can't go through glass, so ensure it still has adequate airflow. I know PC building has also become mainly about building something that looks unique and cool with RGB lighting everywhere, and I'm guilty of that too. But if you're on a budget, consider that fancier cases and RGB lighting usually translates to more dollars. You can buy the same fan without RGBs, and it will likely cost a bit less than the one that does. And when you add up that across say six or seven fans, that money can be better spent on better components. The same goes for the case. Some of the simplest, more inexpensive cases still can offer excellent airflow. I hope you found this basic guide helpful in some way and learned something. And if you did, please do me a favor and hit the thumbs up to help recommend my content to other viewers. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or feedback for me and consider subscribing to the channel for more sim racing content. Until the next one, stay safe and happy racing.